Right. So it kind of seems to me, again, you're making this argument that ACT and National are quite different, but ACT are the real right-wing party and National is only pretending to be a right-wing party. Well, if you, if you look at the principles of the ACT party yeah. uh, and if you look at the principles of the National party, they're very similar. But it really is the difference in terms of what we'd actually do. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, if you, look at, if you look at the difference, for example, in the kind of policies that National ran in 2005, when ACT mm. had a particularly bad election because, mm. because they took our voters, mm. and look at what they're saying and running now, yeah. there is essentially those voters should come home to, to the ACT party mm. because we're actually advocating for the policies mm. that, that they support. Mm. But they're not. Well, unfortunately, they're not at the moment, yeah. but that's why we've got to get our message out there. Okay. That, that, that's their so, natural place in politics. Isn't it a pity that Rodney Hyde's not standing for Parliament again? Uh, I mean, I, I think Rodney's a, a great guy. I, I worked with him when I was at Parliament working for Roger. But you must um, be disappointed that he's not standing for ACT. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm disappointed in some sense, but, uh, but I mean, I think John is also great. Uh, I think but it's can't great you have that both? I've been able to... Why, why couldn't he be a list candidate? Why couldn't he be... Well, well Rodney, d I mean, Rodney wasn't going to stand at the point that he wasn't leader, and so, you know, Rodney made his own choices surrounding that. I thought he still wanted to stand as a candidate regardless of not being leader? Uh, I think it would have been difficult within the party, give, given what happened in terms of uh, Brash taking over from Rodney, to maintain both of those two uh, quite large personalities within the party and influences within the party. Well, that seems unfortunate then, rather than... Well, I, I, suppose, I suppose it is unfortunate. It's a reality of politics. Well, I mean, what about, I mean, what when, about Heather Roy? When David Cunliffe yeah. rolls Phil Goff, I imagine Phil Goff will soon resign as well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, <laughs> that's right. Um, so, what about, what about Heather Roy? I mean, it seems um, like a great loss for ACT, um, losing someone like her. Yeah, well, Heather decided to retire at this election. Uh, she really only ever uh, wanted to serve three terms, and she'd done that, uh, and she but thought it was her people time to have the impression that she was pushed out. Oh, well, Heather said herself that, that she, she decided that it was time to leave. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, I respect that decision. I thought Heather was a, a great MP, uh, and I supported her in a lot of what she did. Uh, I think she did some because, really positive stuff. In because you, she, she was your predecessor, wasn't she, in the sense of the Wellington Central candidate? That's right. Candidate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. OK. Now, back to these social issues, I guess. So the age of alcohol purchase, should there be one? Uh, I'd, I'd keep it at 18. Um, for, so I, wouldn't have, I don't support a split age. Uh, yeah. Don't support increasing it to 20. should keep it at 18. OK. Heather Roy talked about, when she was here, about maybe we don't even need a, a purchase age. What do you think? So, so a 14-year-old could buy alcohol? Is that the... Well, they wouldn't be illegally doing anything wrong if they bought alcohol, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I think I prefer the situation at the moment where, you know, we don't actually have a drinking age. So if a, yeah. if a parent wants to... Well, a 14-year-old can, yeah. Yeah, if a parent wants to, you know, uh, give a 16-year-old a glass of wine with dinner, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, and I think that... I, I agree. I think that's fine. Um, but I mean, I think it is important that at the, at the time that you purchase alcohol, you are making rational decisions about, uh, about that. And that probably means you should tie it in with something like, you know, when, when you're able to vote. Um, okay. Because that's sort of the, the litmus okay. test of, of when so, people so, are. So again, 18 is the right age for voting? Uh, well, I mean, I, I would actually consider lowering it. Um, but I mean, it's not, a, it's not a major issue. I haven't looked at it uh, to a huge degree. So I'm broadly supportive of 18. Okay, um, what other social issues um, do you have any... Oh, drugs. Drug reform. W what do you reckon? Um, get rid of all laws about drugs? Uh, I, I don't think you should get rid of all laws uh, around drugs. I, mean, I think there are uh, some drugs that it's, that it's very difficult to contain the effects of them. Uh, and if you look at the association, for example, between P and crime, for example, yeah. I don't think uh, you know, opening, opening that issue up uh, or allowing people to have easier access to P uh, would would be a very good idea. Okay. So uh, in terms of other other drugs like like marijuana, I personally support uh, legalize, legalizing marijuana so that uh, to the extent there are bad health effects, we can put a tax on it. Um, but also, I mean, this is sort of quite an interesting uh, issue because one of, one of the thing one of the reasons why I think we need to uh, decriminalize marijuana is actually uh, because of the one law for all message. Because the reality is, is it's not people like me who go to prison or, or get mm. fined for smoking marijuana. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, despite similar usage rates between Maori and Pakeha, uh, Maori are five times more likely to be prosecuted by, by the police for uh, possession of marijuana. And I think that's a real concern. That's a, good, that's a good argument. But couldn't you also extend that to other drugs? Well, well actually, the, the, the discrepancy doesn't show up in a lot of other drugs. 
Um, and, and, and indeed, you know, if, if you redistribute some of those resources from the drugs that tend to be used uh, just by young people, for example, to drugs that tend to be used by higher income people, uh, but are in fact more, more damaging to society as a whole, then I think that would probably be a good outcome. Okay, now this might be a good time for you to introduce some of your colleagues because you're standing for Wellington Central, but we're here in Dunedin and there's two of your other candidates here. Um, That's right. To... Uh, so we have Guy McCullum uh, from Dunedin North and we yeah, have Kim Hanna from Dunedin South. Okay, well, do you guys want to say something about yourself and why you're running for Parliament and who you are? Guy? Yes, well, um, I'm running for the Dunedin North uh, electorate. I'm not actually running for Parliament. I'm campaigning for the party vote. I would uh, strongly suggest everybody in Dunedin North to vote for Michael Woodward. It would Woodhouse. do uh, the best. Uh, yeah, Woodhouse. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. But um, the, the reason why um, I'm obviously making the effort to, uh, to campaign for a party vote is that a as a third year university student, uh, there, uh, I am concerned about the opportunities that are available for young people graduating in New Zealand and quite often and sadly it's true that they often go overseas because the opportunities there are, are better, the, they can earn more and they often pay less as well for it. Um, and I think that uh, ACT, uh, through its principles of uh, freedom, uh, choice and responsibility, can actually help shape uh, a New Zealand that offers more to people uh, either starting out after gaining their skills or uh, people returning home. And um, we can also, and, and what distinguishes us, because a lot of other parties are saying the same thing, um, what distinguishes us there is that we don't actually believe uh, that we have to increase government spending or incentivise people coming back home or staying in New Zealand. We can do that simply by making a stronger economy with jobs worth having. Cool. Uh, my name's Kim Hanna and I'm a law and politics student here at Otago University. And I've actually taken one of uh, Bryce's papers, oh, um, polls 102. So um, <laughs> we're in the same class. Um, I'm running for ACT for Dunedin South and again, like Guy, I'm purely campaigning for the party vote. Um, and I'm running for ACT because I believe New Zealanders have a staggering sense of entitlement. And I believe that what I notice is that people, instead of looking first to what they can do to help themselves in a bind, secondly, what their friends and family and the sort of community around them can do to help them, and sort of finally to the government to see what the government can do as sort of a last resort, people just walk to the government for a handout. And I think that's not a healthy attitude to have as a country. I think we need to be taking more responsibility for our own choices and making better choices. That's right. Okay, uh, any questions from the audience? From um, I have a question for all candidates. In the event that the ACT party didn't make it to parliament and like ceased to exist as a political party, which political party would you move on to? Wow, that's a t tough one. <laughs> but good. Know. I think I would be, um, I think I'd be mourning, really. Mm. I'd be mourning and not looking for suitors just yet. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand First supporters are still supporting New Zealand First. <laughs> so exactly. I think I'd either continue supporting the ACT party or perhaps move to the Libertarians. Okay. I, I can't see myself supporting National anymore. But no. National surely is a wide church that, you know, that, a broad church I think is the term, sorry, um, that can take quite different views and... I'm a fairly strong personality, I'd rather not be lost in the, <laughs> lost in the mix. So you just think they're so sort of... I think they're so wishy-washy wishy at the moment, they're yeah. not a party I could support in good conscience. But you're still encouraging a vote for them and the electorate? Uh, yes, definitely for Joe Hayes. Mm. Um, I think something really important for the two Dunedin electorates is actually that they're such Labour strongholds um, that they're not really getting attention from sort of central government. No one's paying any attention to Dunedin, the, neither National or Labour, because both uh, electorates are bright red. Okay. And I think if, if people are voting for the national candidates in particular, um, making these contested seats is going to be really positive for Dunedin as a whole. So maybe that's a problem with the electoral system. Are you guys, do you have firm ideas about how to vote in the referendum? Well, uh, myself, I mean, I, I personally support uh, a single transferable vote, but uh, having said that, I'm swinging between MMP and, and STV as well. Um, but if we were to keep MMP, I'd like to see electorates using the preferential voting system instead of first past the post, which I think would be probably a more acceptable version of MMP. Mm, okay, okay. I'm actually a big fan of supplementary member. I think <laughs> it's a nice compromise of representation for smaller parties while at the same time keeping the efficiency that you see under systems like first past the post.